Tonight on The Edge, Hamtramck is a diverse community, so when a culture feels under attack, it's an unsettling feeling. Yeah, and recently, Tara, an anti-Semitic post was shared on a public social media page, and as Fox News' Camilla Mary tells us, the poster is a candidate for city council. Your words have consequences. Um, so I just ask that you really just think about that. An anti-Semitic Facebook post on a public page called Hamtramck Square. As a Jewish American, it, 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 and really just as a person in general, it, it really scares me. The post reads, quote, was the Holocaust God's advanced punishment of the chosen people for the savagery they're committing today against the innocent Palestinian children and civilians? an act proving that they're as savage and cruel as the Nazis themselves, or even worse. The post was written by Nasser Hussein, a businessman running for Hamtramck City Council. I would just hate for, for someone who, who had those thoughts um, to be a, a representative of our community. Other people echoing similar sentiments. One comment, this is deeply disturbing. Another one read, you're one sick and demented individual. You should show what a man you are and head back to help your people. You coward. And to be honest, I try to stay out of the, the politics as much as I can. But Scott Aronson says he couldn't stay silent after seeing this post. It's important that, that people see it so that they understand that this is what's happening. It's important that voters of Hamtramck see it so that they understand when they vote for somebody, this is what they're voting for. I don't want to understate this as, as, as anything other than horrific, horrific anti-Semitism. And of course, we did reach out to Nasser Hussein for his side of the story, but he did not respond to our requests for comment. Camille Amiri on The Edge. Well, the war in Israel could put Americans at risk of a terror attack. That's the word tonight from both the FBI director and the head of Homeland Security. And while Jewish Americans make up roughly 2.4 percent of the U.S. population, they make up about 60 percent of all religious-based hate crimes in the country. The actions of Hamas and its allies will serve as an inspiration, the likes of which we haven't seen since ISIS launched its so-called caliphate several years ago. And we've already seen threats and attacks against Muslim and Jewish Americans since the fighting in the Middle East began. The Homeland Security Department is now reaching out to law enforcement agencies as well as places of worship to be on alert. The UAW strike may be suspended, but business leaders are still waiting to see how long it will take to repair the economic damage. It may be a quick fix to bring the labor force back, but it will take some time to get facilities yeah. back up and running. Fox News' Dave Kinchin dives into that story tonight. I think what there was concern about was the rhetoric and the messaging that occurred. That's one of the many worries Glenn Stevens says area businesses represented by the Detroit Regional Chamber shared as they watched six weeks of heated battles and tense negotiation between the UAW and the Detroit Three. Now they're hoping the tentative agreements reached between all those parties will fix the economic damage caused by that long strike with an estimated $10 billion in losses. That means the Detroit Three is a companies, but also the supply chain, which is literally hundreds and thousands of companies across the country. So the impact to, you know, to wages, to lost time, to the labor force, bringing the labor force back, those are short term issues. On Monday, GM became the final member of the big three to strike a tentative deal with the union, boosting wages by 25 percent, though that's more like 33 percent when you factor in inflation. It also marks the first time ever salary GM workers will see a significant raise, according to top union negotiators. The deal does away with controversial pay tiers and brings two new EV battery plants under the master agreement. But getting back to full production will take some time. It's tough to bring plants back up. You got labor, you got equipment that needs to be restarted. But the one thing about this, this industry is it's very fat, flexible and it's very nimble. Ford was the first automaker to get the ball rolling when the UAW announced a tentative deal with the Blue Oval last Wednesday. Stellantis followed suit this past Saturday with a deal mirroring Ford's, leaving GM as the only holdout. The union struck GM's Spring Hill, Tennessee plant after a stalemate on some unresolved issues before a meeting of minds prevailed at the beginning of this week. Meantime, many auto analysts say that these tentative agreements are a big win for the union. They expect the union to go down south and to try to organize workers there who work for the foreign automakers, including Volkswagen. We'll keep following all of this as it develops. Dave Kinchin on The Edge. 
Well, it's case closed for nine defendants charged in connection to the Flint water crisis. Attorney General Dana Nessel's office says it's ending its pursuit of criminal prosecutions after the state Supreme Court declined to hear their final appeal. The Michigan Supreme Court rejected an effort to revive charges against former Governor Rick Snyder. There have been zero felony convictions in the seven-year investigation. Flint community activists believe justice will never be served. I hope that, yeah, they would be held responsible because everybody was appalled. Flint's being poisoned and poisoned for profit, and there's no way people should get away with this. The people of the city of Flint has not been made whole. The community has been decimated, destroyed. A full report on the efforts to prosecute is expected next year. Well, firefighters work well into the night to contain a mansion fire in Bloomfield Hills. It's an 11,000 square foot estate on Lone Pine that caught fire this afternoon. Firefighters from multiple neighboring communities were called in to help contain the flames on the property. We're working right now to gather more information tonight. Well, lithium ion batteries typically will burn three to four times hotter than your conventional uh, fire. Birmingham Fire putting out the warning about lithium batteries after this garage was destroyed by a fire connected to those batteries. We're told the homeowner freshly charged a lithium battery, unplugged it, stowed it away, and then it still sparked this destructive fire. These batteries should not be around water. They shouldn't be submerged in water. If you drop them, you're going to look for cracks. Uh, if you see an obvious crack or an odor coming from it, get rid of it. Take it to your local uh, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's. They've got disposal centers. Get rid of it. Um, don't try to charge it because that's when you're going to end up having this problem. And that information is key. Remember that. You can find lithium batteries and lawn equipment so that you can store in the garage like weed whackers, lawn mowers, and bikes. Good advice. Well, this is not the scare people plan on seeing on Halloween. Snow started falling from the sky just as the trick-or-treaters were heading out the door this evening. Corinne Resnick of Berkeley sent us this video saying, I know it's Michigan, but this was just not okay. The kids and the parents, wow, had to bundle up, maybe even cut it early because of the cold and then the snow, but it really didn't stop them from having a great time. No, anyone who grew up here like we all did, we know that it doesn't matter. Fox 2 photojournalist Coulter Mitchell hit the streets with these hearty trick-or-treaters. We are at our annual trick-or-treat, trunk-or-treat, excuse me, right here with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office. We're so excited to be able to give back to our community. Communities are stronger together. We want to be able to provide a safe Halloween for all of our children here in Detroit and all of our metropolitan area. We're right here at Rosedale Park at the Community House. We'd love to have our older children out here too. Our whole base is here with the Wayne County Sheriff and all of our law enforcement partners across the nation as we want everybody to be safe. And if that's any of our children, even you cool teenagers that are 13 and up. Come on out with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office. What's your favorite part about Halloween? Is it the candy? Uh, yeah, and mostly the spooky stuff. And I love other people's costumes and I love to see them. What's your favorite kind of candy? Um, pink. You like pink candy? I think they're mostly just giving out vegetables here. How does that make you feel? No good? Okay. What is your favorite kind of candy bar? Granola bars. Granola bars? <laughs> That's Chocolate a... granola bars. Oh. That's candy. Chocolate granola bars. Oh, okay. You scared me That's candy. Good thing about coming here is you can put this candy to the side. You don't have to go and search it. You know it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> what is your costume? Um, a china toy. A what? A china toy in my... A china toy. Dinosaur. Oh, a dinosaur. And I'm a T-Rex dinosaur. <laughs> T-Rex Dinodor, all right. It's a Triceratops, actually. <laughs> is this true? Do you think the snow is having an effect on anybody? Definitely, definitely. It's freezing, right? It's having an effect on me, so. <laughs> Happy Halloween. So Happy cute. Halloween to you as well. Hope they had plenty of candy and much more to last for the rest of the week. Hopefully the snow for many people out there won't last. 
I you can't got speak. This. Well, too much candy. Last the yeah. rest of the week. Try yeah. saying that five times fast. How many M and M's did you have tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fess it up. Yeah, too yeah. many. Uh, snow showers. They were with us for most of the evening. You can see why. Low pressure was spinning down over the south end of Lake Michigan, but we were right on the fringe there of those snow showers, and there was a coating in some areas, especially in the northern suburbs. But for us, the snow flurries are ending. Still some chances for snow up there east of Port Huron and Sarnia. Right now, just a couple leftover flurries out there, but cold is the main word for the rest of tonight. How about the numbers today? 41 and 27, your official high and low. Way colder than what it should be for Halloween. Look at the record, 79 and 21, way back in 1988. And yes, officially just a trace of snow at the airport. Look at these numbers in the lower 30s for a lot of us. And there is that breeze out there from the west and northwest that is producing wind chills. Wind chills on Halloween as low as 22 in Ann Arbor right now, 24 is for Flint and how 24 wind chill over in Mount Clemens. Certainly a lot of cold air on the map. Marquette 27, Chicago 36, even down as far south as Cincinnati. 36 degrees, 35 Pittsburgh, 33 in Buffalo. Thankfully, our low pressure area is heading east. As a result, we have dry weather for Wednesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And as high pressure builds to the mid Atlantic, we'll be on the backside of high pressure. And that means a gradual warm up heading into the weekend. You'll see it all in the seven day forecast for the rest of tonight. Any lingering flurries are going to be winding down cold for sure down to 29 tomorrow, November 1st already November 1st, partly sunny, still chilly tomorrow, but we will at least get some sunshine and then check out that full seven day forecast. We're moving up 47 Thursday, 52 Friday, a pair of 55s for Saturday and for Sunday. Next best chance for wet weather is early next week. Remember, Get that latest forecast, check the radar, check the numbers. It's there for you on the Fox 2 Weather app. You can download it for free in the App Store or in Google Play.